Hey guys, it's me. I was inspired to run a contest. So it's a contest that has to do with the following video, okay? So while editing this video, I started cracking up at the number of times I used the phrase reality check. And the thing is, I don't use reality check in normal conversations with people, so I have no idea why I used it so often in the following video. And that's what was so funny to me. I couldn't stop laughing at myself, and I was like, should I edit it out? But then I decided, no, I'm going to keep it in and just poke a little fun at myself and then use this opportunity to create a contest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a contest to give you guys this product. Okay, I love this product because it's perfect time of year for it. Great at protecting the hair during the fall and winter months. And I love the Curly Cues line by Curls. It smells so good. So this one smells like cupcakes. You know, it's called actually Red Velvet Moisturizing Curl Cream. It smells so good. And one of the things I love about it is that it's very protective of the hair. Um, during these months, it helps to keep your uh, hair hydrated. So it's a great sealant. It keeps the hair from getting frizzy. And it gives you great curl definition. Plus, it doesn't have parabens, silicone, sulfates petrolatum, mineral oil, any of that stuff I don't like in it. So I had an extra bottle and I thought I would share it with you. So to enter the contest, all you have to do is this. You have to subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. The second thing you have to do is watch the following video uh, and count the number of times I utter the phrase reality check. <laughs> Once you've counted the number of times I've uttered that phrase, you're going to type it into the comment section below and then press enter and that will serve as your entry. The contest will run for a week, so I'm opening the contest today. This is uh, November 14th, 2013, and so it will end a week from today, November 21st, 2013, at midnight Central Standard Time. And uh, once I receive all the entries, I will place the entries that have the correct answer into a randomizer, which will randomly select a winter, a winner, and then in my Walking Dead video update for the week of, sorry guys, I didn't think this far ahead. I really decided to do this kind of at the last minute. So this is 20, okay, so my Walking Dead video for the week of October 25th, I will announce who the, oh, not October, November 25th, um, I will announce the winner, all right, and then I will ship this off to you. Okay, thank you guys uh, for watching and supporting the channel. I hope you enjoy the following video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey everyone, it's LaDawn. I am back with a recap of Season 4, Episode 5 of The Walking Dead. This episode was really interesting to me. I think I came away from this episode with a deeper and a greater understanding of Herschel's character and why he is so committed to taking care of the sick and dying and for D, even though he showed little or no concern for the pigs and, you know, farm animals that were dying, given that he's actually, you know, a veterinarian. But in any event, um, I really gained a new level of respect for him and I got him. I love Herschel's character, but I think I got him a little bit more um, in this episode. So the episode opens with Rick coming back to the prison and letting Maggie know Carol would not be back. She was the murderess. And um, I was happy that Maggie got it and that she admitted that she probably couldn't have made the same decision, but it was the right decision. And that's one of the things I really like about Rick. Whether you like him or not, whether you feel like he is a tyrant or not, he is pretty much right on the money when it comes to making decisions for the group. I mean, he has brought them through the zombie apocalypse this far. I mean, I think they're like a year and a half to two years into the zombie apocalypse. And he has brought them this far and, you know, made good decisions for the group, even if it felt like he was being, you know, a tyrant or, and, you know, he didn't hesitate to come at you with, yeah, I made the decisions. <laughs> Or, yeah, I made the decision because, you know, he always leans his head down and then looks you in the eye when he's talking. That's a Rickism. Anyway, 
he always comes at you with that. Um, but he's right on the money. So you can't you can't fault the guy. So I was glad to see she supported him. Meanwhile, Herschel is in Ward D, um, aka Ward Death. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that's what I've nicknamed it because everybody is like dead or dying in there. Um, so he's in there caring for the sick and, you know, obviously one of the folks died very early on in the episode and he made it his business with Glenn to will the guy out and then, um, you know, stab him in the head so that he wouldn't come back as a zombie. And he gives insight into, as, as to why he does that and, and I get that. Um, I thought this episode was really interesting, you know, focusing uh, on Herschel because it really helped you to understand, or it helped me to understand that for Herschel, I feel like, you know, he always says that people, we all have a job to do, we all have a job to do. And I think I understood for him the importance of not just having a job to do, but it's almost aligned with one's purpose you know so if you feel a sense of purpose around whatever it is you're responsible for whether it's a job whether it's getting better whether it's you know maintaining a positive outlook so that you can hang in there until the meds come or you know whether it's uh, taking care of the sick and dying um, when you are in alignment kind of with that purpose it gives you the constitution or the ability to be able to persevere um, even when things don't look uh, the best even when the outlook is dreary it gives you that inner kind of uh, pool to draw upon to keep moving forward no matter how hard it is and so I really just got that from Herschel this episode and it really helped me understand why he was so uh, committed to taking care of the sick and dying and I like that about him at first when he started wheeling people out you know to, after they died and then stabbed them in the head uh, so they wouldn't come back as zombies I thought you know what's with all the pomp and circumstance Herschel what's, what's going on here really but he really helped kind of clarify why that was important and I get it you know and I think that was the right decision because you really can't usher in a feeling of hopelessness when you see someone die and then on top of that you're you know bashing in their skull <laughs> you know their skull some things you don't need to be um, uh, exposed to even though you know it needs to happen and that it will happen to you if you die there's something about seeing it happen just like, you know, now with uh, the 12 Years a Slave movie or even The Passion of the Christ, those movies, I think, are so much more impactful. Like, we all know the history of our country. We all know, it, you know, if you are of faith, you know, you read your Bible, you know about the crucifixion. But seeing that happen is such a more impactful experience than reading about it or knowing that there was a possibility that it happened. So I get why he did that, and I think that was really a great decision. Um, one of the things that I thought was funny in this episode was Rick, when he came back with the supplies, he went to check on Carl, and then he threw Carl a bag like with um, like leather candy or leather fruit or something like that, and he's like, tell the kids to floss. And it just reminded me, when he does, his character does those subtle little things, it really um, helps me to remember, and maybe that's his job. Maybe it's Rick's job to maintain that balance and that connection to, you know, our humanity and to the, you know, what what normal life would be like if there wasn't a zombie apocalypse. So, I mean, I guess big ups for that, but sometimes I feel like Rick just, in some ways, he does need that reality check. Um, so Dr. Caleb <laughs> went into war demons. He was bringing the heat. He had, you know, magazine, you know, with uh, bullets and he had guns. And he shared that with Herschel because I think he knew that his time was limited and he was going to be passing away. And, um, you know, Herschel was kind of like, oh, no, you know, we're not going to need that. It's not going to come to that. But I think 
one of the things that I really appreciated about Caleb's character was that he was trying to give Herschel a reality check. I look at Herschel as a, a person who is very much in alignment with his faith, right? And uh, that hope for not just the future, but for this moment. We need to maintain our faith and our hope in this moment because that's the thing that's going to get us to the next moment. And I think the counterbalance to that was Dr. Caleb saying, look, no, look at me. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> Many people here are probably going to die. And you need to be prepared for that. You need to you know, maintain that faith, maintain that hope, keep doing your job. But part of doing your job is preparing for the possibility. You know, people can die before we reach that mountaintop note moment where potentially and prayerfully everybody, you know, could be healed. And, you know, it really did rest on Herschel's shoulders to be able to embrace that, to be able to embrace both. And I guess when you think about the zombie apocalypse, you really do need to have both of those. If you give way to hope, if you lose your faith, then you might, you know, off yourself <laughs> because you're hopeless. It will be very difficult for you to move on and to press on. Um, but at the same time, you have to keep that balance kind of perspective. You can't you can't totally fall into that um, that other perspective where I need to, you know, have my gun and be ready to shoot and kill people, you know, at a moment's notice. You can't only operate in that arena because then you become like Carol, right? <laughs> and you lose that sense of humanity. So I like their little exchange um, as far as that went. And um, I was glad that at least Caleb revealed an out because I was like, what if all these people die in this ward and Herschel doesn't have any defense like you know what's gonna happen so it was inevitable that at some point all heck would break loose within that sick ward um, and Herschel would not be able to usher folks out before they turned into zombies and that's kind of what happened so what freaked me out about that whole thing and it shouldn't freak me out because I've told you before I think the little girl is crazy Lizzie somebody needs to get her together when she, <laughs> when the zombie came out of Zen, uh, uh, Glenn's cell, and she's like, here, boy, here, boy, here, boy. I'm like, this girl is truly crazy. This is not Lassie. And um, I thought, you know, if Carol could only see this, all of her, you know, story time, knife fighting uh, education down the drain with this Lizzie, Lizzie, uh, Lizzie kid. <laughs> You know, I thought she's weird. And they need to keep an eye on her. I don't know if she, I, I suspect she's the one who was feeding the rats through the fence. But I, this little girl, she's guilty of something. I don't know what it is, but she's guilty of something. I do not, not trust her, not one bit. Herschel finally brought out the big guns. And he, you know, he handled business in that, in that war. And he tried to save as many people as possible. So he was flipping zombies over. And then... And then when he realized that that one zombie still had the air compression thing on that Glenn needed, even with his bad leg, he flipped himself over into that thing with the zombie. I was like, go Herschel. <laughs> and then on the outside of the prison, gates were falling down, zombies were coming in, and uh, there's just Carl and Rick out there. And so finally, Rick had that reality check and you know, he's tossing Carl guns and Carl's tossing Rick magazines, bullet magazines, and they're doing like the St. Valentine's Day massacre to zombies um, outside of the gate. I thought that was priceless. And I'm like, finally, Rick gets it. You know, he really has to recognize that Carl is growing up in a different age. And Carl did it without that hat on. <laughs> so then they pan to the outside of the prison you know, all is at peace within the prison. There are more, no more attacks on the gate. It's a beautiful countryside. And then all of a sudden we see the governor. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the next episode um, to find out, like, whether there will be more interaction with the governor. Will he try to attack the prison? Will he try to come into the prison, you know, at night now that that fence has been um, demolished by the zombies? And... 
I wonder if he had some something to do with that. Let me know your thoughts about the episode. Do you think that the governor planned for the zombies to knock down that fence? How do you think Daryl will respond or in Tyrese respond to Carol being gone? And what do you think the next emergency will be at the prison? Obviously, there are going to be plenty of them. I really don't think they're going to be able to stay there very much longer, but time will tell. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know. Leave a message below, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.